I'm Miss Kristen of the Oosterhout Free Library, and I have a question for you. What is yellow and described as a lump with the knobs that is also a vegetable, a grain, and a fruit? It's corn, and it's corn-tastic. Some of you may have seen the popular interview with a kid named Tariq, also known as the Corn Kid. If you haven't, I'll put the link in the description box below to the video and its fun song. Now, in the video, Tariq describes how at first he didn't really like corn, but then he tried it with some butter, and now he loves it. Do you like corn? I sure do. In fact, it's my favorite vegetable. So today I have a rather silly story to share with you called Bob and Rob and Corn and the Cob. Bob and Rob are squirrels, and they love corn on the cob. Their friends do, too, well, except for a rabbit named Emma Mae Dobbs. She's a bit of a food snob, which means that she's a bit of a picky eater. Can Bob and Rob get Emma to try corn on the cob? And will she like it? Well, we'll find out. This silly story also has a little robot looking for its mama, which is kind of silly, but wait until you see who its mama is. We'll have to read the story to find out. Then I'll share some corntastic information and activities about corn. So let's begin with Bob and Rob and Corn on the Cob. Bob and Rob and Corn on the Cob. Written and illustrated by Todd McQueen and published by Sky Pony Press. This is Bob. This is Rob. These two squirrels love corn on the cob. So does this duck, and so does this dog. Mama. But not this rabbit, Ella Mae Dobbs. She's a bit of a snob. This chicken loves corn, and this piggy does too. But Ella Mae Dobbs loves pan-seared tofu. With carrots cut curly and hot cheese fondue. Mama. The duck looked at Rob. The pig looked at Bob. But they just kept on crunching their corn on the cob. I want my mama. I want a kebab. I want to see Ella eat corn on the cob. Sweet Ella Mae, we really like you, so I'll try those carrots and rob here the tofu. As long as you'll try corn on the cob too. Oh, boo. Crafty old Bob. Oh, and poor Rob. Well, what do you think, Miss Ella Mae Dobbs? With the right amount of seasoning, I suppose this dish could be... Interesting. Yes, Bob and Rob love corn on the cob. They even love tofu. Just kidding, Rob. But now they all agree. 
even Ella Mae Dobbs. Mama. That nothing's quite as fun as. Popped. Corn on the cob. Mama. The end. That was kind of silly. Ella made Dobbs tried the corn, thought it was interesting. Then the robot made the corn into a kebab, heated it up with a blowtorch, and pop, made popcorn, which she loved. Oh, and the robot's mama was the popcorn machine. See, I told you it was a silly story. Do you like corn like Tariq and Bob or Rob? If so, what's your favorite way to eat corn? Now, think about all the different ways that you can eat corn. You can ask your family members, too. But before you answer it, let's learn a bit more about corn. You might be surprised about all of the things that can be made from corn. But first of all, what is corn? You might say it's amazing. In fact, some people call it maize, M-A-I-Z-E. It can be a vegetable, that's what we eat. When it's dried, it becomes a grain, like the yummy popcorn that we eat, or it could be ground into flour for things like corn chips or tortillas. Botanists, people who study plants, consider corn to be a fruit, because a fruit is the seed-bearing structure of a flowering plant, and it relies on animals and humans for dispersal of the seeds after the fruit is consumed. There's a lot of cool information in this book called The Life and Times of Corn. Let's take a quick look. The Life and Times of Corn, written and illustrated by Charles Micucci. Published by Houghton Mifflin Books for Children. Cornucopia of uses. Corn is used in more products than any other grain. Most corn is fed to livestock, made into sweeteners, or distilled into ethanol, a fuel for cars. About one-fourth of all supermarket items contain some form of corn. Like sweetener for soda, juice, cakes, cookies, and candy. Corn syrup, margarine, mayonnaise, salad dressing, and cooking oil. You can find corn in paint, ink, artificial silk, plastics, garbage bags, batteries, laundry starch, and disposable diapers and baby powder. A menu of maize. Corn is a versatile food which has inspired cooks for centuries. Dried corn can be ground into flour for baking. Fresh corn can be boiled, fried, or roasted. Corn is a source of carbohydrates, which provide us with energy. There are more than a thousand kinds of corn, which can be grouped into four major categories, sweet, dent, heirloom, and popcorn. Each year, Americans eat more than three billion ears of sweet corn, some canned, some frozen, and some the fun way, fresh off the cob. Corn grows in a wide range of colors. In centuries past, Native Americans cherished ears of corn for their color as well as their size. Corn of many colors is referred to as Indian corn or heirloom corn. An heirloom is something special that is preserved for future generations. Growing to the sun, corn plants grow to maturity in about four months. During the first two months, the plant produces leaves, which absorb the energy from the sun and carbon from the air. Down below, the roots absorb water from the dirt. Together, these elements make the plant grow taller. Farmers call this time the vegetative stage. That was an amazing book. You could check it out from the library to learn more. Now, corn can take months to grow tall and ready for us to eat. 
Unless you visit a farm, you probably won't get to see it grow. But did you know that you can sprout your own corn from a corn cob? Yep, it's kind of cool to look at. So here's how you can do it. This activity was from the Veggie Buds Club, which has tons of fun veggie recipes and activities for kids. I'll include a link in the description box below. You'll need a dry corn cob. You can also use heirloom corn, or what is commonly called Indian corn, which are easy to find this time of year. You will need to fill a dish with about one inch of water and place the dry corn cob in the water. Then place the dish in a sunny spot and then wait and admire your corn as it grows. Within a few days, you'll begin to see shoots sprout upwards and you'll see the roots begin to grow in the water. Now, you'll need to add more water when it becomes absorbed by the corn in the sprouts. You'll also want to change the water from time to time so that you don't have mold growth. Now remember, this is just a fun growing activity. The sprouts are not recommended to be eaten because they wouldn't taste too good. But it sure is cool to look at. If you like, you can take a look at this time-lapse video of someone doing the same exact experiment to see it for yourself. I'll put the link in the description box below. You can also try sprouting using a few kernels of fresh corn. It won't sprout completely, but you might see an interesting growth. First, you'll have to remove a few whole kernels from a cob and place them onto a damp paper towel. You'll probably need to fold the paper towel a few times over together and put it inside a small container or plastic cup. Then you'll need to keep the paper towel damp. Too much water might make the kernel moldy and it won't sprout. Too little water won't help the sprout to grow either. Then in a few days, one or more of the kernels might burst open. A few more days after that, and you might see tiny little spots like this. Like I said, you won't see a complete sprout for that, but you'll definitely see something cool start to grow. I hope you had fun exploring, and I hope you have a corn-tastic day. See you next time. Bye.